How Cardboard Composting Can Supercharge Your Soil and No Worms Needed Have you ever wondered if there's a faster, easier, and cheaper way to make rich black compost that your plants will absolutely go wild for? Here's the truth. Most people are doing composting the hard way. Forget the fancy tumblers, pricey worm bins, or slow piles that sit for months. There's one trick that can change everything, and it starts with something you already have lying around your house cardboard. Yep, that boring brown box in your garage might be the key to creating steaming hot, nutrient-packed compost in record time. We're diving deep into how cardboard composting, when done with the right method, can turn your scraps and yard waste into black gold in as little as a few weeks, not months, weeks. And the best part? You don't need worms, electricity, or complicated tools. Just science, a little strategy, and some good old backyard magic. Why does cardboard composting work so well? Most composting methods rely on time and patience, but with cardboard as your secret weapon, you're accelerating the process naturally. Cardboard is carbon-rich, which makes it the perfect brown for your compost pile. It acts like a sponge, soaking up moisture, holding heat, and feeding the good microbes that break everything down. But here's where it gets interesting. When cardboard breaks down with the help of fermentation, it creates the perfect storm of heat, oxygen, and microbial activity. This process turns your compost pile into a living, breathing engine of soil creation. And no, we're not talking about tossing in greasy pizza boxes or laminated shipping labels. We mean clean, uncoated, unbleached cardboard, the kind used in shipping boxes or egg cartons. It's surprisingly powerful once you understand how to use it right. How Fermentation Supercharges Your Compost Fermentation isn't just for making yogurt or beer. It's also the secret to unlocking fast, hot composting. When you create the right environment for fermentation inside your compost pile, organic matter starts to break down at an accelerated rate. The microbes multiply like crazy. They eat, they breathe, they generate heat. This isn't cold, slow rot, it's hot, living transformation. And the more active your pile, the faster you'll see results. This microbial party does more than speed things up. It also boosts the quality of your compost. Fermentation makes nutrients more bioavailable. That means your finished compost won't just be crumbly and dark, it'll be packed with plant-loving minerals that go straight to work in your soil. Now let's talk setup. You don't need a bin or a fancy container. A corner of your yard will do just fine. The key is layering and uh, getting the moisture right. Start with a thick layer of torn or shredded cardboard at the base. Soak it with water until it feels like a wrung out sponge. This is crucial. Dry cardboard won't decompose, but wet cardboard kickstarts the process. Next, add your greens. Things like kitchen scraps, grass clippings, or even coffee grounds. Then throw in another layer of browns dry leaves, straw, or more cardboard. You want to keep alternating like this, always finishing with a brown layer on top. Every few layers give it a splash of water to keep things moist but not soggy. If you squeeze a handful and water drips out, it's too wet. If it crumbles, it's too dry. Aim for that perfect, sponge-like dampness. If you want to go one step further and really heat things up, here's a simple microbial booster you can make at home. Mix one cup of unsulfured molasses, one cup of plain yogurt, no flavors or sugar, and one gallon of warm water. Stir it well and pour it over your compost layers as you build. This mixture feeds the microbes and kickstarts fermentation like rocket fuel. Just one gallon of this mix per cubic yard of compost is enough. Once your pile is set up, the magic is in the maintenance. This isn't a set it and forget it system. If you want hot compost, and I mean steaming hot, you need to give your pile air. Every three to five days, grab a shovel or pitchfork and turn it. Dig deep and move the inside to the outside and vice versa. This keeps the oxygen flowing and the microbes happy. Watch the temperature too. A good pile should hit 130 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit within a few days. If it doesn't, your ratio might be off. Add more greens if it's too slow, or more browns if it's getting slimy and always keep the moisture in check. Too dry and nothing happens. Too wet, and you'll end up with a stinky mess. A properly balanced pile smells earthy, not sour. 
You'll know your compost is done when it looks like rich soil. It'll be dark brown or almost black and have a crumbly texture. The original materials, cardboard, leaves, food, should be mostly unrecognizable. That means the microbes have done their job. If you still see large chunks of cardboard, give it more time or sift them out to restart the process. To separate the good stuff, just use a screen or, you know, even your hands work just fine. Set aside any unfinished bits to go back into a new pile. The finished compost can be added straight into garden beds, mixed into potting soil or spread on top as mulch. Your plants will respond almost instantly. You'll see greener leaves, faster growth and better yields across the board. So why are gardeners calling this the best composting method yet? Well, there's a reason cardboard composting is taking off. It works. It's fast. It's cheap. And honestly, it delivers results that most traditional composting methods just can't match. The beauty of this method is that it works year-round. Even in cooler months, fermentation keeps things cooking. And since you're not relying on worms or plastic bins, you've got more freedom and flexibility. This technique is perfect for backyard gardeners, homesteaders, or even small-scale farmers who want high-quality compost without high-tech systems. You're using waste to create wealth, you're turning trash into treasure, and you're doing it in a way that's sustainable, smart, and yeah, surprisingly simple. So, are you ready to try it yourself? Just grab that pile of cardboard you've been meaning to throw out. Go ahead, shred it, soak it, and build your first pile today. Whether you're working with food scraps, grass, leaves, or even garden trimmings, cardboard brings it all together into one hot, fast, fertile system. Honestly, the results speak for themselves. Your soil deserves more than just old banana peels and hope. With the power of fermentation and the magic of cardboard, your garden could be blooming better than ever, without worms, without waiting, and without the hassle. Give it a try and you'll see why cardboard composting is more than just a trick. It's a total game changer.